Hey guys, so it's been since I've done an update with my Stormtrooper armor from my Novos, but um, I wanted to, I, I started doing a bit of work, and I wanted to show you just kind of how these things are assembly-wise. Um, it's a bit of work, but uh, I think once you figure out the best way to uh, get a routine going, it, it, you can get through them pretty quickly. I've, in the last couple of evenings, I've managed to produce um, say about four pieces. So... There's different ways of doing this. There's other tutorials on YouTube, I think. I've been trying to make my life easy. The tutorial that I found on YouTube was using like a uh, air-powered cutting tool, which I'm sure is fantastic, but uh, how many people own those? So I gave it a go using tin snips, or um, my dad calls these side cutters. And these have been working just fine. And then I've been cleaning it up with uh, mostly sanding and um, when I say sanding, I, I have a Dremel uh, with a sanding bit on it, but uh, but then I've just been using sandpaper to do a lot of that as work as well. So I want to. These are two um, forearm guards, and they're identical pieces. So I wanted to show you what the difference is from from what you get in the package to finished. So you can see these are vacuum formed molds or molded pieces. So, you know, means they have a mold, they put the plastic in and it sucks it down onto the, the shape and you get this. And because this is the assembly kit, you've got to cut out all the extra. So this, of course, is all just mold, flash, just extra. They do give you a cut line. So what you want to do is cut around this little indented line all the down here, all the way around for your arm to fit in, obviously. And the pieces are all numbered. They're also coated with a, a plastic um, film for protection, which is nice. Um, I found that uh, doing the sanding with the f with this on kind of makes it difficult to remove. So the best thing I find is to cut it out with this tin snips, then remove the plastic, and then do your sanding. These um, these are quite handy. These uh, these are just stickers put on here to number them for assembly. Um, so you could, if you can keep them handy, if you need to take off the uh, plastic film and then put them back on. So just to show you, basically how I start this, I'm gonna be cutting pretty much on this line. If anything, you know, if I need to, if I'm not sure about getting the angle, I'll go inside so that I don't cut into the armor piece, of course. So I find what I'll do is also. When you're cutting through the corners, th this you need to have a bit of flex for the excess to pull away. So I, I kind of just cut these a little bit so that it can bend as I'm doing it. And maybe even cut these corner bits right off. You can see how it easily just cuts right in. But it does make kind of a rough, well not rough, but it leaves the impression of the teeth on the plastic, which I'll show you. So just to prepare it, I cut a bunch of these in here. Right. And then you can basically just start cutting away carefully on the line. It says in the instructions to mark this with a pencil. Uh, pencil doesn't really work. And you know the line is pretty clear if you've got good lighting so I don't see any problem with just going ahead and cutting. So you can see that now you want it to bend away. This is why I made these cuts so that they can flex. And once in a while, I'll just cut the whole thing right off, just to make your life easier. Oop. Just a little bit at a time. Just like if you were actually cutting metal with this. And of course, careful around the corners. Let's get this piece off, because it doesn't bend very well anymore. Okay, so let's take a look now. So you can see the 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 edge here. This is the pattern from the um, from the tool. So a little sanding will just take that right away, right off. And then the inside, you want to clean that up. I use the Dremel mostly to get rid of these larger pieces because the Dremel can just chew right through the plastic. Um, it's not very thick. So you want to be careful. So what I do is I kind of go along the inside edge with the Dremel, and it will 
give this a nice bevel because you don't want this to be cutting into your skin when you have it on too. And then go on the outside and make it look nice. And then I use the hand sandpaper just to pinch it around and rough up the whole thing. Just, er, well, not to rough it up, smooth it down. So I'm going to try to do a little more on camera without buggering this up. This piece I started cutting and another cut up the middle because there's quite a, uh, you know, there's quite a steep angle on this guy. Here, there's a bit of give in the plastic. You can always go back and cut this again if you don't get close enough. In fact, let's do that. Let's just cut this up here. Now I can have more room to get my tool in there, um, so to speak. And just, uh, just take your time because you've only got, well, I've only got one of these kits and I do not want to have to buy another one. Let's get that out of my way. I was leaving more room, cutting mo more inside here before, but um, then I had a lot of dremeling to do, and I found it's easier to get a, uh, a clean cut than a clean uh, sanding line with the dremel. Okay, so this is this is good enough now to start sanding with. If you don't have the Dremel, you could just use sandpaper and do this by hand. It might just take a little bit longer. Obviously any power tool is going to um, save working with your hands. And these pieces I'll just collect into a bin or bag that you keep nearby. I've just been using this empty uh, Coca-Cola box. Because this is just ABS, so I think it can be recycled. And uh, this looks like our cut line here. It, it looks like a lot of flash, but uh, I'm sure that's where it goes. Let's take this 17 off and we'll stick it there for later. Um, yeah, I think... Well, this better be the right cut. It, yeah, it's got to be, because the line goes right through here. Oops. Sorry, I was off camera there for a minute. You can see some scuffing here. Well, you might be able to see scuffing. Um, in most cases, that's just on the protective film. So that's not on your armor. And, uh... I've not decided whether I'm going to paint this armor yet. I mean, I, I don't... I haven't compared to the film to see if this is, uh screen accurate for white. It's going to be really hard to tell because the color white varies on uh, in photography and film so much. So I'm going to give it a go and I, and I think what I'll do is I'll do painting as a maintenance thing. Like if I, when I get this all together, and I, I'll probably keep it this color white and then you know if, as I'm wearing it, if it gets scuffed or damaged then maybe I'll just take some gloss white paint and paint onto it to uh, repair any damage that it gets over time with wear and tear. I did try a test job of painting some of the inside, and um, I used a Krylon gloss white, and I couldn't really tell any difference really, except the paint didn't quite adhere perfectly. It was a bit, uh, it was a bit sandy looking. So I think uh, I think I I don't want to paint it straight away if I can help it. I'm going to cut these into smaller bits because there's a lot of flex going to be required to go around these corners. So again, just carefully. By the way, these are uh, pretty new tin snips. Um, I mean, I've had them for a long time, but I rarely cut metal with them, so they're still quite sharp. Um, if I had used these, I would I would probably buy a brand new set of tin snips and a good pair if I were going to go at this brand new. But these are, as I say, these are new enough. These are good Stanley tin snips. Okay, so um, as I've been babbling away there, there is the cut piece. So again, you wouldn't want to put that right on. Even with the under armor, it's it, it's going to be a bit sharp. So we're going to sand this down with um, kind of a medium grit sandpaper, which I will show in a minute. But that gives you an idea of how much cutting is required. And that didn't take too long. It was uh, probably less than 10 minutes for this piece. And the sanding would take about the same amount of time. So, you know, if you've got an hour or two 
You can kind of knock out a few pieces every day. So I'm going to go in the garage and clean these up with sanding and uh, we'll come back and show you what they look like after. So here's the uh, wrist sculpt and sand it down. Just leave this one in the back for reference here. Uh, right, so you can see it's um, cleaned up pretty well. So I just use a Dremel attachment, kind of like this, for sanding it. Uh, this is good for the, uh, the rounded parts, of course. Not as good for making the um, making a straight line here, but if you cut it properly, you shouldn't have a problem. And then after that, I just use a plain little piece of sandpaper. This is roughly a medium grit. Um, I just grabbed what I had. It's a P60. I don't know. Um, you could also use um, a block, just get a scrap piece of wood and staple a piece of sandpaper to it and you could, this would be good for uh, flat areas, parts that you need straight, I mean. Uh, you could also use a sanding sponge. Um, um, and I've peeled the protective coating off so you can notice it's uh, slightly less glossy now, I guess. Uh, but that's just to give you an idea of how much cutting is required all the stuff that you gotta trim off, but it doesn't really take very long. So yeah, that's my um, my first update, my second video. I'll um, try to post a little bit more as I get some more pieces done. Oh, I can show you the chest plate. I have that ready. Um, I apologize for the white background. I meant to change that, but I didn't get to it, so. Yeah, that's the, uh, the torso piece. Since I have a handy, here's another bag of stuff you get. These are the, the Velcro straps and uh, Velcro tape that they give you. And there's some snaps in here. Uh, you do need to buy a tool to set these snaps. So I've got to find one of those, um, you know, it's, it's so that you can put it into the fabric and then tamp it down to stay in place. Doesn't say anywhere what size they were, so I got to, I had to pull this out so I could look at it and make sure I get the right size tool. It looks like these are probably 10 millimeter snaps, but uh, oh, I should probably stop crinkling that bag so you can hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyway, um, but yeah, the instructions show you all the tools that you need. Uh, other than that, it's pretty basic stuff. Oh, and uh, over here you can see the, uh, the helmets. On the bottom is the Innovus helmet, on the top is the EFX helmet. And uh, of course there's Unicron blocking our view. But, uh, I'll, uh, I'll show more of that in the future.